Android Q is coming and the beta is here already. So what's new? Hey guys, Ash here from FTJ by C4 Retech and let's take a look at exactly that in today's video. FTJ is new and needs your love, so go on, ring that damn bell. So let's first begin with the visual changes. Android finally has a theming option that lets you change accent colors. Now if you go in a settings, developer options, scroll down to the bottom, you can find the options to choose between different colors for your accents, change the font, or even change the shape of your icons. Quite nice, right? Number two, okay now don't panic, dark mode will probably return in the next beta, but for now the toggle for dark mode seems to have disappeared from Android Q. However, if you upgrade from P to Q having dark mode on, then you'll be greeted with a system-wide dark mode. That being said, you'd have no way to turn it off either. Next, there are a couple of things that have been shifted around with the ambient display. You now get to see the name of the song playing like this, and the battery percentage indicator has moved from down there to here. The next change is that we now get to see the estimated battery life besides the battery icon instead of the usual percentage under quick toggles. Neat. Notifications themselves have also gotten a bit of an update. First up, we can no longer swipe them on both sides to clear them. Swipe right, and now we get to see the context menu. In Pi, this was available with a half swipe to the right. The options themselves haven't changed though. We still get to snooze or mute the notification. Another small change is this bell icon. It appears on notifications which actually causes the phone to ring. Quite handy if you keep getting annoyed by your notification tone but can't quite figure out which app is causing it. Talking about the bell icon, you'll find one right below the video. Hit that if you haven't yet. No, back from that self-promotion, we have the new Wi-Fi sharing options. With Android Q, Wi-Fi connections can be shared with just a QR code. Tap on the settings cog and the share option will be there. Now, we've already seen this on some custom ROMs and even MIUI, but I'm glad to see it incorporated right into Android Q. Number seven, the settings menu, especially the app section has gone through a major redesign. We now have an open option in here that lets us jump directly into the app itself. We also have a notifications option along with how many notifications we receive from the app per day listed in here. Pretty nifty, right? Earlier, this data was only accessible through digital well-being. Under accessibility, you can also find a time to read setting which toggles how much time a floating action message will be visible before it disappears. Perfect if you feel the default one disappears way too fast. Support though is baked in by the app developers, so if it doesn't work for your favorite app, don't blame the update. Also with the new settings panel API, developers can have apps give you a pop-up to toggle for Wi-Fi or Bluetooth without having to open the settings app itself. Google has also now provided developers with a new way of choosing which apps would pop up when you hit the share button within an app. In earlier Android versions, the share button would sometimes take a long time to load up all the app options, especially if a user had a lot of apps downloaded on their device. Well, Android Q solves that, but once more, it's up to the developers to integrate it. You can see the new faster share options here in Chrome. That brings us to number nine. Android Q comes with a native screen recorder. Settings, developer options, feature flags, Scroll down the list till you find settings underscore screen record underscore long and toggle it on. After that, just long press the power button and long press the screenshot option to bring up this menu. Google also allows you to screen record and use the mic of a connected headset to do a voiceover. Sweet. Android Q also happens to be pretty focused on privacy and as such, there is an entire section in the settings menu which is dedicated to it. And when you install an app, you get this new look permissions manager and you can even allow certain permissions for only when the app is in use. Good to see Google implement this. When you sideload an APK, the new Android Q installer doesn't open up a full screen installer. Instead, you can choose your options and complete the installation process from the same pop-up window. Well, these are the major 10 changes. There are a lot of minor ones as well. For example, several apps like Google's wallpaper app and the files app have received a major uh, material design makeover. If you delete an icon or a widget from the home screen, you can now click undo on this little toast notification to have them back. 
The cards in the multitasking menu now have more rounded corners. The power button menu now has an emergency option. And finally, screenshots include a notch as well as rounded corners. I mean, I really don't know why Google went with this one in particular, but maybe it won't make the final cut. Anyway, this video has stretched on quite long, so I'm not, I'm just gonna end it right here. There are a lot more changes Google has made under the hood. You know, for example, the support for the AV1 video codec and given system ability to pass on JPEG images in the dynamic depth format to apps. If you want us to make a more detailed video explaining the behind the scenes changes going on with Android Q, let us know in the comments below. Now, I guess that's pretty much it. Thumbs up, thumbs down based on whatever you felt about the video. Subscribe if you haven't yet. Ring the bell, please. Till next time, my name's Ash. You've been watching FTJ by C4E Tech and I'll catch you in the next one. Ciao.